Welcome to this extended Happy Accidents landscape tutorial. Let's get started. I'm using cold pressed watercolour paper and I've just used an HB pencil to draw in the top of the hills, keeping everything super simple. I'm applying lots of water to the sky area to begin with. And this is going to be a two stage sky and I'm beginning with a yellow ochre wash. I'm going to be painting literally into puddles. You may have come across the phrase happy accidents. I use it a lot with my students to kind of describe if something kind of doesn't go their way or something goes wrong in the painting, sometimes it can actually turn out really well. I've always sort of described cauliflowers and blooms as happy accidents. Well, I have a bit of a happy accident in the sky that I'd like to share with you. So at the moment, I'm just adding a very dilute yellow ochre with my flat one inch brush into the sky and into the water area below. So I've wet the entire sheet of paper. I'm painting the yellow ochre where I can see lots of kind of a yellow in the sky area. You can use raw sienna as a substitute or even a very dilute burnt sienna. Mixing up a little bit more of the yellow ochre, slightly stronger mix and painting it damp into wet in the foreground area of the water with my one inch brush. If you don't have a one inch brush, don't worry, just use a really large brush, the largest one that you have. I'm mixing up here some cadmium yellow with some viridian. If you don't have viridian, you could use thalo blue, Prussian blue, or even cerulean to make a lovely limey light green. And I'm painting this sort of to the left side of the land where it's lightest and then bring it across to the right hand side. I want this area to be really light. It's where the light sort of shining down on the land and it's kind of the focal point. And I'm just going to use my tape as you saw there to tilt the painting so that the green doesn't run up into the sky. So this is a two stage sky. This yellow ochre is kind of the underpainting. Sometimes when you're using blues or greys and you've got a color like yellow ochre, it can sort of go slightly green. So by letting it dry, you don't run this risk. So I am using my size four round brush and I've mixed up Viridian with Payne's Grey. Again, if you don't have any Viridian, you could use Prussian Blue with Burnt Sienna or Burnt Umber. And I'm just using the tip of the brush to tickle this paint on so you get lovely soft edges. And it's pretty much damp into wet. So my brush isn't very wet, but the paper still is. And you get these lovely soft edges and the look of sort of bushes and trees. I've mixed up a little bit more Payne's Grey there and I'm adding some more Viridian and I'm adding a pinch of Burnt Sienna, taking the excess paint off on my paper towel. I'm painting damp into damp there with the tip of my brush. Damp into damp, you get soft edges but the paint doesn't run as much and it's slightly darker because the paint is slightly thicker. So I'm just dotting along here, creating all these different sort of marks on the sort of edge of the hills there. It's a lovely way of painting fields in the distance. So again, mixing up some more paint there, the Payne's Grey and the Viridian, as you saw, again, taking the excess paint off and the paper towel and painting damp into damp or damp into wet. So as you can see, I'm just building up here adding some more paint on the right hand side damp into pretty much wet paper actually. So I'm just tilting this down because it was running up into the sky and I'm just tilting it to get it to stop doing that but also to run down as well and adding a few more marks. Getting a little bit more of the Payne's Grey and Viridian. I'm just sort of painting this light wash down to the sort of horizon line, the water's edge, and using that same colour and painting on the left side. So these are going to be the quieter areas of the painting. So I've used a clean damp brush here to soften that edge and I'm blending left to right there. I've mixed up some more Viridian and Payne's Grey, slightly thicker, so it's a bit darker now. And I'm painting damp into damp with my size four round brush, just building up the darks and details in this sort of focal point area. And adding a little bit more of the Viridian and Payne's Grey, literally hardly any water. And I'm adding these really dark 
colours on top of a mid to dark tone there. So you can still see these dark sort of trees and bushes sort of coming through there. But obviously where you've got the lighter area that really sort of comes forward. So this area is in the shadows from the clouds above. So I'm just adding a few more darks here and there using my size eight round brush now to paint sort of bigger, darker marks here on the right hand side, damp into damp with that Viridian and Payne's Grey. And as I come nearer to the lighter side, I use the tip of my brush to make sure that I don't lose the lighter areas. And I'm just using a clean damp brush just to soften this edge here on the right hand side. I'm going to allow my painting to dry. For step two, I'm painting the second stage of the sky wet in wet, starting off with ultramarine on its own and then ultramarine with burnt sienna. And I'd say about 70% ultramarine and 30% burnt sienna. And for my third wash, have about 70% burnt sienna with 30% ultramarine. So you've got a lovely warm dark brown there for the sky. So I'm wetting the sky and I'm using lots of water because I want to kind of create some happy accidents using these puddles. I don't think I've actually ever sort of thought of this as a happy accident technique but it's a really nice way of painting a sky because you're just allowing the paint and the water to do it for you. So remember less is more. So what I'm doing here is I'm squeezed out that ultramarine and burnt sienna mix there and I'm tilting. And you can see the bottom part of that run. I didn't actually intend for that to happen, but just go with the flow. Don't panic and just see what happens. I'm actually mixing up a slightly darker color here. I've added some more ultramarine and by accident, and this is an accident not of my intention this time, I added a bit of violet and I thought the color was Payne's Grey and I've actually squeezed violet into my Payne's Grey pan for another tutorial I did a while back. So I just thought whoops and I thought shall I change that and I thought you know this is all about happy accidents just go with the flow and that's what I'm doing here and I'm just tilting and letting you can see there's puddles of water there as well and I'm just thinking I actually quite like that color so I'm just going to keep going with it. So I've actually added some quinacridone gold you can use a little bit of yellow ochre if you like and it just takes the edge off the violet and it's a slightly darker color. Color. And again, I'm going to squeeze the paint from my brush. You can use a pipette as well to do this. And you can see it's lovely and dark. And I'm tilting now. So I want the dark cloud to be above. It wasn't moving as much as I wanted it to. So I'm spritzing it with my spritzer bottle. You can see some cauliflowers developing on the right hand side of the sky. Now, normally I'd sort of thinking, oh, I don't want these cauliflowers. But this is all about happy accidents. And I thought, you know, I might just see where this takes me. And I'm spritzing that dark cloud. It still wasn't moving enough. So I'm just spritzing it. And some paint ran down right into the center there. And again, I might have panicked, but I'm just going with the flow. And I'm using my paper towel to pick up the puddles at the edge of the paper there. I'm using a very dilute ultramarine with a pinch of burnt sienna. And I've just squeezed the brush and allow the paint to run into the center of the sky. As you can see, I'm tilting and I've dropped a little bit more of that color, slightly darker with my size 10 brush. And I'm tilting this little puddle into the middle of the sky. It's not moving as much as I want, so I'm just spritzing it here with my spritzer bottle. You can see there's drips going everywhere and I'm just letting all the paint run just to see what happens and it looks very atmospheric as well quite a stormy sky and i love all the different colors and i'm using daniel smith's ultramarine which has this beautiful sort of granulation textured effect that you can see in the sky especially top right hand side and i'm just collecting puddles there with my clean damp brush trying to get this paint to move i'm just tilting just be patient 
Um, I was tempted there to use my brush to get it moving, but I resisted. I'm trying to not do very much brush work at all and just allow the paint to do its own thing. I find the less you use a brush, sometimes the watercolour can look so fresh and vibrant. Look at those delicious backgrounds. They are so yummy. I love the colour as well. So I'm going to allow my painting to dry. And once the painting is dry, I'm going to apply wax in the water area. Now you don't have to do this, but it resists the watercolor. It creates a lot of light sort of textures and it looks like the light glistening on the water. You may want to practice this and my advice is don't press too hard. It can look a little bit awkward. Just rub it very gently onto the paper. So I'm applying the washi tape on the water's edge and I'm going to paint the land up to that so you get a nice sort of straight line. You may want to practice this beforehand to check to see that your paint doesn't seep through the tape. If it does, what I would suggest is just draw a pencil line there and paint up to that pencil line. But it's quite a nice easy way of getting a straight edge. And I'm wetting the right side of these hills here very gently with my size 10 brush and a little bit on the left hand side and the sort of land going all the way along the water's edge. The part that I'm not wetting is where the light is hitting that hill, which is the star of the show. I've mixed two washes, Viridian and Payne's Grey, which is what I'm applying now. I've also added Viridian and Payne's Grey to that violet wash that I use for the sky. So I've got two different darks and I'm painting at the moment wet into wet with my size four round brush. And I'm mixing up some more Payne's Grey here on its own. I'm painting that damp into wet so it's slightly thicker. In this sort of right hand corner, it's quite dark little bit more Payne's Grey and Viridian and not very much water. The surface of the paper is quite wet so it is diluting that dark and I'm adding some more Payne's Grey and Viridian here and painting damp into wet at the bottom there just at the water's edge with my size four round brush painting on the left here too. It's running up as well there which I quite like. Painting the sort of top of the hill here on the right hand side to create sort of dark on dark trees so it doesn't come forward like it does left of center. And as you can see, I'm just building up those darks, working damp into wet. I'm painting wet on dry here, um, just to add a few more darks and details to the light part of the land, just here and there with the tip of my brush with the Payne's Grey and Viridian mix. Again, if you don't have that color, you could use Prussian Blue with Burnt Sienna. And I'm going to allow my painting to dry once more. For the final stage, step four, I'm going to paint the water wet into wet. As you can see, I've removed the washi tape and it's got a pretty much straight edge. But what I'm doing here is I'm kind of going across with a clean damp brush and catching some of that water's edge to soften it. Now I am doing this deliberately. Um, it's just so it doesn't look like a completely sort of rigid hard edge. I'm just using some of the leftover paint and I am painting damp into damp there, right and left side and in the foreground, you can see the wax is resisting the paint as well. So you could use a very dilute Payne's Grey if you haven't got any leftover paint. And what I'm doing now is I've rinsed my brush, I've taken off the excess water off from the paper towel at the top there and I'm just blending this sort of light grey colour. What I'm doing now is I'm mixing up an even darker colour using some Payne's Grey and Ultramarine. And I'm painting damp into damp with my size 10 round brush to create that sort of dark shadow that's in the water, as you can see in the photograph. And I'm painting a little bit in the foreground as well. I've taken the excess paint off my brush, as you saw there, and just painting a few darks here and there with the tip of the brush. I'm really trying to make sure I don't lose my light. So do take your time 
and I'm painting a little bit of the dark to the left hand side as well kind of reflecting what's happening on those hills there and I'm adding a little bit more dark to the right hand side and trying to actually make that sort of hard water's edge disappear into the shadows and I'm blending with my size 8 round brush and now I've swapped to my flat clean one inch brush and I'm just finishing off with some gentle blending. So here is the finished painting. I've removed the washi tape to reveal a lovely white border and it gives me time to assess to see if I need to do any more. But I think I'll leave it there for now. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial where I actually use happy accidents to create this amazing sky. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments section. And if you'd like to support the work that I create here on YouTube and get access to my weekly exclusive tutorials with downloadable outline sketches, why not think about joining my Patreon membership? Details about the membership can be found in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Happy accident painting. Bye for now.